Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 32 of Ranwin Parked with myself, Cone Dodger, ZK, and Kurt. How are you doing? Doing just fine. Living in deja vu, just perhaps? Fine. A little bit yeah. of deja vu. Just a bit. It's a little oh, weird. It's a little weird. Well, a little weird. You know, <laughs> it happens. I'm still, I'm still weirded out that suddenly we have episode numbers. <laughs> <laughs> We've always had episode numbers <laughs> from the very beginning. Yeah, you just, now we just know that Kurt really doesn't watch these. He really doesn't. I mean, <laughs> I don't blame you because, you know, you lived it. But <laughs> I didn't start saying the episode number until recently. Mm, that must be it. That I do I it. do go to at least vote for myself in the best of. I don't even <laughs> vote for myself. <laughs> Oh, wait, did it? Did it? Well, uh, no, because we switched to straw poll, so it's hard to tell if you. I don't want to double vote for myself. <laughs> uh, the straw poll thing is still working fantastic, by the way. That's getting so many more votes than we ever got <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the YouTube poll version, so that's working well. Uh, and other things that we're doing in this show that my co hosts here forgot about entirely. The Guest Spotter is going to be a segment on the show today, and as mentioned on the, I think it was the one-year anniversary show, uh, the format is going to be that I will be doing an interview with a guest separately, and putting that basically at the end of the show, uh, and I, I am fully blaming ZK and Kurt for that, because they have to have like these fancy lifestyles and whatever, so it's very hard to get everybody's schedules to work, so... We'll see how that works. Let me know if you if you like having that in there or if it's too weird. Who is our I guest think... this week, or do we have to wait till the end to find out? Our guest this week is one Caswall of the Automation Developers and mm -hmm. will be representing New Zealand for our ads on that segment. Interesting. Interesting. I, I hope there's cool weird stuff that i've never seen before i don't mm, it's, it's getting hard to show us <laughs> things that we haven't seen before by how much <laughs> searching we do for cars so that's uh that is a challenge that that should be like the whole segment is find a car we haven't seen before <laughs> <laughs> but let's uh let's dive into the ads for the week starting with ranwin parked and i will begin with a 1978 Porsche 928 that uh, has has the slogan in it, Ran When Parked. Uh, I'm just going to put this out there. The car has been sitting. Ran When Parked several years back. Serious inquiries only. Car needs a lot of attention. Sorry, lots of attention. I don't want to misread what they're, they're claiming Make sure there. you give it plenty of scritches. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, please don't reply with ridiculous offers, which I think is... Deliciously ironic, considering they want $7,500 for a 1978 Porsche 928 regular base model that is extremely sunbaked and very and ran much, when parked. And ran when parked. <laughs> and it's a 1978 Porsche that ran when parked. That's really not saying much. <laughs> so, so when do you think it was parked? Like 1981, maybe? Gosh, trying to get a read on the deterioration is confusing because it looks like it's been like repainted like it looks like someone's done some stuff to it doesn't yeah, that look like, like it was originally red and then like primer the bumper was gray or something yeah so i can't get a good read of this was like an original car that sat and and became this or if this has been many iterations of a project car that turned into a nightmare not that as Porsches do. Not that this looks like it would be a nightmare or anything. I, not not the most known thing that the the Porsche 928 was Porsche V8 powered. It was it was meant to be like the replacement for the 911, and they seemed to think that front engine rear wheel drive V8 power was the way to do it. And uh, I'm fairly certain that the 8 at the end of 928 doesn't mean that it's an 8-cylinder. Doesn't? <laughs> what does it mean, then, Cone Dodger? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it means anything. <laughs> but 
but there's been these wild rumors out there from some people <laughs> that the eight <laughs> meant that it was an eight cylinder. <laughs> uh, but if you know, you should let us know because it'll it'll solve a debate. <laughs> I do like the intake manifold because it looks more of a spider than the Q45 does. Yeah, it's it's very spidery. Looking at it, you would think it's a flat eight. Like it, it doesn't yeah. look like a V8. And the like, distributor goes the wrong way. That's that's very weird. I, yeah, and there's yeah. It's dryer weird. ducting. Yeah. Factory dryer ducting. The air filters yeah, no. at the back? Like, that's an actual hot air intake? What's going on? <laughs> like, I realize the ducts go to the back, but all the heat from the engine's going to move backwards into this air box. Well, you see, they're used to their rear engine cars. True, and true. So they always put the air filter at the back. That's all they knew. It is kind Porsche of a neat in car. A phrase. Yeah. It's kind of a neat car. Um, a, An old roommate the, uh... of mine. Really wanted a five-speed. Handbrake. Handbrakes on the left side. I oh, the the Doug DeMiro classic there, noting the <laughs> the handbrake on the on the left side. I don't know what the purpose of that was, other than maybe space. I don't know. They weren't sure how to design around a a central drive shaft, so they're like, "Uh, oh, where do we put this? There's no space here. There's a transmission in the way." I I do Our... now notice the floor mats that are very water stained so this is adding years to how many years this has been sitting to me yeah and the dash is completely flaking off and the little lumbar support in the back seat was like just falling apart which how does that even happen <laughs> oh you know all the yeah, people that sits back there all the people like, that were that, sweating that, that on looks that like it's from like the 2000s or something like that looks like it was added after the fact <laughs> and it's still deteriorated yeah, it's like a it's a low mileage, but that could mean bad things. Like it oh, broke some hard miles before yeah. it got a chance to be driven, and that's just been sitting for decades. And I think that whole rear quarter was repainted or bonded at some point. Yeah, that's a weird rust pattern. It's very it's very confusing. The layers of patina here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a that's a Ranwin parked Porsche that isn't quite as exciting as most people would think of when you say Randwin parked Porsche. I, I, I don't know. Most people. I, I can't, I'm not in that group. I can't get excited about the 928 as much as my brain wants me to be because it's like the weird Porsche. It's, oh, it's just weird I, in the wrong ways. I just noticed something. Mm -hmm. Take your finger from the B pillar and like trace it along the bottom edge of that rear window. Okay. It's exactly the same as the brat. Oh, you mean like you mean like here? <laughs> yeah. There you go. So you're saying Yeah, just cut it off and it's a brat. You're saying this is one sawzall blade away from being a brat. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I would not feel bad about cutting this one up. All right. Well, somebody's gonna have to give me seventy five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> No, give them a ridiculous offer. <laughs> I'll tell them. The ridiculous offer is, I want to buy your car and turn it into a brat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kurt. What you got? What? This is something I've never <laughs> seen before. Me either. You don't have to wait for the New Zealand segment. Yeah. How about a 1978, same year as the, the 928, uh, Mazda Rotary Cosmo. A Cosmo for $2,500. Kramer. A Rotary Rarity. Hmm. Um, well, it does not have the original engine, but comes with a 13B and a five-speed trans. Hard to find car. Uh, speedometer reads 41,000, but it's only five digits. I believe it. It's a rotary. <laughs> <laughs> and it's sitting out here in a field, waiting to be rescued and you... turned into something you've never seen before. You know what this side profile reminds me of? Ford Thunderbird, like it's got. Oh, that... I thought you were going. I thought you were going to say Dukes of Hazard because it looks like it's jumping. Oh well, <laughs> with the nose up, sure. But just something about the design language of it is very like trying to look luxury, but in that weird Thunderbird -y way. Yeah, that whole like segment of cars that doesn't mm -hmm. exist anymore, mm -hmm. like the personal luxury two door like giant coupe things. And yet it was rotary powered. 
Yeah, Monster did some weird stuff. Uh, somebody's got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where they got that other engine and transmission from. Mm. I've certainly never seen one of these. Ooh, that's a tail light assembly. Mm hmm. I knew the Cosmo existed. I didn't think it existed here. I didn't think we got them over here. I guess it's a left hand drive. Maybe Canada got it. <laughs> that's a face. <laughs> <laughs> that's a face only a mother could love. Huh. Yeah, this is a confusing car. I. It is a weird. And here's nothing. Yeah. Uh, just like the side profile with like those three windows. Yeah. Guess there were automatics. There's a piece of wood there now. It's uh, it's got a wood transmission. <laughs> the the old wooden transmission. The the red like velour style interior also very Thunderbirdy. That definitely feels like the kind of market this was for. But how strange. How strange. Very strange indeed. Uh, this goes in the same category as the 928, where it's like, I want to like it. <laughs> it's <laughs> weird, and I want to like it, but it's Whoa. not calling to me. Hello? Hello? Hi. This is... Did you Did you get lost in the cosmos? Oh no. We've resorted to puns. <laughs> resorted? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's really our first brand. Episode. Yes. If you weren't ready for that, you weren't ready for this show. <laughs> <laughs> what did you have to say about this car, ZK? Um, well, I'm more familiar with the later three rotor versions. I can't say I've ever seen that. And wow, that grill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's from a grill. <laughs> yeah. Not a great face. Not helping that it's jacked up in the air too. So it's So it came with a two rotor, right? Mm -hmm. Supposedly, like I don't know if it's a 13B or a 12A or something. 12A, which are not probably. very heavy motors. They're not. So how light are those springs in the front? <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> If you put a if you put a three rotor in this thing, it'd probably be like drag on the ground. Yeah, I I don't know how to feel about this. I like Mazda because they're weird, but like oh, those seats, <laughs> seats um, or something. <laughs> yeah, sometimes yeah, I don't, sometimes I don't weird has its limits. I I think I would be more attracted to it if it was actually like a not ran when parked. Oh, if it was like a complete car. Like, complete and, like, you know, not dead with age. Still had the purity. 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 <laughs> ZK, do you have the, the purity? Oh, the purest of pure. Ooh, that's pure. <laughs> <laughs> the purest. Uh, I think this was a, yeah, a 90 Ford Mustang. Um, the title of the ad was parked... Turns on, sounds like it has a cam. So it's got. But you know, two it also sounds down. like it has a cam <laughs> when you're only firing on like six cylinders. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one caught my eye because it is probably the most mildewy car I've found that was labeled Renwin parked. And yes. it's got all the cool, like, I don't know if there were options or yeah, it's got like it, body kit. Yeah, it's stuff. got like every dealer option body kit thing on it. It's got the fake Other louver like, taillights. Yeah, it's got a giant like fiberglass wing. It's got the uh, the ground effect flares on the sides. No louvers, sadly. No louvers. I wonder if they know it's dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, doesn't get any cleaner up here. Mm -mm, the the lights that look like they've Gosh. been a fishbowl for years. They look bad, right? But can you imagine how satisfying it would be to clean those? <laughs> like, <laughs> if you got those to look, left. if you got those to look like clear and see through again, you would really feel like you've done something in your life. <laughs> 
I do like this guy's backyard though, because there's a random disassembled other car. Mm -hmm. Um, engine crane just in the backyard, a door to a the truck, truck door, yeah. yeah. And then the yellow, partially painted, uh, fence posts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or pillars or whatever, but yeah. I can't tell if it was like drowned or if it's just mildewy. The engine bay looks kind of drowned. I I mean this is in like the Houston area. I was so just going to have been underwater. Is this a Houston car cuz look at like every bolt. Like every bolt head is rusty. Which is not a common thing here unless it was maybe at the bottom of a lake or what was a lake for a period of time. <laughs> maybe some salt water intrusion into your area. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's not headlight yellowing. That's actually still full of water. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The more I see, the more water I see. <laughs> but, like, if it was water damage, I think it was over the roof. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. That's disgusting. You've done well. Is it a dis disgusting? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, no. <laughs> I get my fun in there. I don't think I would. I don't think I would put that much effort into making this one running and driving. But it, it has already, a cam. It run. It has a cam. No, it's down two cylinders. It does not have a cam. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's got the uh, the choke cam, but it's fuel injected. <laughs> Granted, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it could be choked full of seawater. <laughs> it looks like it's missing the belt too. So, how did they run it without the belt? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they just remember from years ago. You know, before mm -hmm. the flood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ran, ran when drowned. It's down till I drown. What was that? Huh? What? Huh? What? I'd make that mistake. I would make this mistake. Legitimately, um, this is a Triumph GT6 package deal. I'm always, I'm always into the package deals because <laughs> I like it when you can acquire somebody's entire history of mistakes. Like sometimes <laughs> you can get somebody's mistake project. Sometimes you can like get somebody's long standing obsession that has never gone anywhere and just take it over. And this is one of those cases because they have a 68 Triumph GT6, which is my favorite of the, the British sports cars. I've always loved the look of these. And uh, one of them has a title, and the other one that uh, is in many parts apparently doesn't. And it comes with a lot of stuff. But this is the main car that I guess they consider to be, like, restorable. And it doesn't look like it's in horrible shape. And you've got just a gamut of things to <laughs> put it back together. <laughs> Need a door? Have a few. Need some hatches? Got some of those. <laughs> they just, they just kept collecting. There's an engine there somewhere. There is an engine there. I've always liked anything with a clamshell hood too. I like, I like me a clamshell hood, especially when it's I, the whole I, front I, end. I, yeah, I, I couldn't tell by your previous car history. It's weird, <laughs> I know, right? Car history and posters. I just noticed the brake. Or clutch master cylinder is backwards. Are you seeing this? I wonder if I can rotate it. Hey! Hey! So, like, the reservoir goes this way, and the rod comes up this way. It's got to be for the clutch. It's because yeah, your foot be. is literally probably like literally underneath that part. Oh yeah, maybe that actually like pivots. So, like, when you push yeah. the clutch, it pushes it this way. That's an interesting mm -hmm. thought. I've never been around one of these. I don't know what kind of nightmare they are. <laughs> um, well, seeing as how this person probably has 40 years of nightmare and got this far, it's probably pretty bad. <laughs> but look at that. Look at that rear end, ZK. Look at it. <sighs> <laughs> it's pretty good. It's I'm not going to. It's real good. It's real good. I look at it with the hood open. I love it. This is this is just basically the most obtainable Viper I can get right 
Um, yeah, that's. It does have all like the classic British sports car lines too. It's kind of MG B G T, but but with a little bit more style to it. I feel. I do. Also, it's got the long hood. Long long hood. It's got a. I do find six. them weird to look at if you look at it next to the convertible. Because it's exactly the same, except for this. Right. This is all just like swooping tailgate. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of like plop. It's a it's a coupe now. <laughs> yeah. Or it happened the other way around, and it was sawzall. This is a convertible now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never. I was never huge into the British cars stuff. Growing up, I was always just kind of like I would just like look beyond them. Um, but apparently, in my old age. I, I need I need a triumph in my life. Forty five hundred dollar <laughs> for all. I, yeah, that's probably not a bad deal. I don't think it's I a see bad three deal. there though. He only shows or talks about two, but I see three in this picture. I f I have a feeling if you showed up with forty five hundred dollars and the ability to tow things away, they would just be like, "Take it, please, <laughs> get it out of here." <laughs> I feel like this garage smells like your garage when you got your house. That's fair. That's fair. Doesn't look like there's as much stuff moving though. Yeah, not creature, a lot of creature wise. <laughs> yeah. It almost kind of maybe seems like somebody had all these cars and didn't live to finish them because these are kind of a an older gentleman's project kind of car. So, I could just inherit a whole generations of mistakes. <laughs> And I'd like to do it. Forty-five hundred dollars, everybody. Come on, you can do this. Yeah, we just yeah. put it in. Uh, um, GoFundMe slash Ramblin' Parked. Mm -hmm. All right, the that moment exists. that's not us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't. Don't do it. Yeah. Uh, the moment me and ZK have been waiting for. Mm. Kurt J. Mack, what have you here? A mistake that I tried to make. Oh. I'm no. afraid I have a story of yet another one that got away. Sad <sighs> trombone. <laughs> Very sad trombone, but as you can see, posted about an hour ago because that's about when I found it and immediately posted it into our Discord between the Randwin Park folks here. And uh, I contacted this owner of this, sorry, Datsun 280Z 1977 original, asking only $5,700. And for $5,700, you might be thinking, oh, so it's like, doesn't, it's Randwin Park. Right, <laughs> it doesn't have right. an engine. Um, but no, no. Uh, either this person doesn't know what they have or didn't know what they had, or we're just like, didn't. Ready really to get rid of it. <laughs> Just yeah. wanted to sell it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, apparently uh, they had the engine rebuilt uh, 30,000 miles ago. Uh, obviously, they did some body work as there's, you know, some. The telltale primer. The primer spots and things like that. Um, but otherwise, it just looks. It's, it is, it's that one that's like attainable <laughs> it's in, in, in it's the ideal a, kurt j max z anymore in my yeah, opinion it's, yeah. it's like <laughs> not too nice so that it's not super expensive and if you mess it up it's not like a tragedy and it's True. it looks like it actually would be drivable yes hmm. and i'm yeah. sure it is um but i did contact them Slightly too late because somebody else contacted them before me, and we're very interested. Uh, and we're going to show up the next day with cash. If only you had, if if you had called before you posted in Discord. <laughs> yes, that was <laughs> minutes. I'm sure it was minutes away. Um, so yeah, instead of being like, I, I I'm not gonna, you know, get into a bidding war with anybody. That's not the point. The point is to find one and pay this affordable price for it. Um, so the guy was like, uh, you know, if this guy doesn't show up, I'll give you a call. You're number two in line. Cause I'm sure he had mm -hmm. I'm sure his phone exploded after this got posted. Um, 
but uh, I checked back with him, and and number one guy made made the purchase. Yeah, Our I totally, new number it, one. <laughs> number one. I mean, if nothing else, it at least means that the dream is still alive. Like it does happen. <laughs> Because it was starting to look like it doesn't happen anymore. Like, everybody that has a Z knows what it is and knows what to ask for it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and there we... That, that's, that's, that was me. <laughs> uh, you should have actually recreated this image. And then, just, and then I would have voted for you. the other day. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh... So yeah, I mean, I even, you know, I, I told the girlfriend about it and like, she didn't know I was like that serious about like finding something else. I'm like, honestly, yeah. I mean, for this price, uh, I would have paid what he was not asking. To do it. It, it would be dumb. It's, it's a, it's a, it's an investment. No, but I mean, like, seriously, you paint it, you fix the interior. Mm -hmm. uh, if it does run and drive as well as I assume it does, um, have fun with it for a while and like, then sell it for 15 grand um bring a trailer or so you know something right and like it's... the interior looks a little worn yeah, sure. and the paint is worn but like it's all there it's not rusty it still it's has really stock it still has the safety bumpers which is mm -hmm. unheard of for a late <laughs> 280z because they're they're not great i'm gonna be honest with you but in my opinion, they still look better with the safety bumpers than they look like with no bumpers. But maybe I'm yeah. alone in that. Yeah, um, Kurt just has keeps buying cars that need bumpers, though. Yeah, yeah, need bumpers to be imported from <laughs> Indonesia. Ah, <laughs> uh, so so yeah, sad. So close, yet so far. And this would have been like. I mean, it's actually a lot of weight on my shoulders because I feel like the Z is the whole reason, like that we're here. Because I think, like the, the 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 first reason we ever had any communication with each other was me being like, maybe instead of the Winga Dinga car, you'd like a 240Z. <laughs> but that was six years ago when they were still obtainable. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you I got do... it and it was a piece of crap, it would have been all my fault. Like everything <laughs> all the way back would have been my fault. <laughs> I do wish you would have at least got the chance to like look at it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is still that like, yeah, don't meet your heroes thing too. Like you haven't even driven one. Or no, yeah, I don't in, even. I did in one. Entirely possible. I am too tall. All right. <laughs> um, they they are much smaller in person than than you think they are. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean this this came from like a, kind of a richer neighborhood, uh, you know, outside of. I could Seattle tell by and... the barn. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell from the barn and the really nice lawn and the tractor, <laughs> and the tractor yeah. and the house. Um, so yeah, it, it's very possible. This is just an older guy who just was like okay i'm done with this um and you know didn't need the money or anything like that but ah, ah so close so close <laughs> so close uh, like like he said he told us about it that day and then i kind of decided in my mind that i was just not going to ask you like i just was not going to bring it up you usually disappear on the weekends anyway, so if 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 you you came back on Monday or Tuesday with a Z, that's how it was gonna be. But uh, I wasn't going to like nag you about it because I had a feeling this was going to be the story. When it went up for that price, I knew somebody the moment that ad was posted was driving to, to get it. <laughs> Right, yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, and it's not like heartbreaking either. I wasn't, I didn't like have the money out of the bank, and I wasn't like making room in my garage. Uh, it's also it's heartbreaking not the right to color. Me. <laughs> <laughs> not the right color. You, you got, you got to, you know, convince yourself that it wasn't meant to be. So yeah, yes, yeah, true. <laughs> Silver is not great, but it is a, a nice, easy platform to make it into anything you want. <laughs> I figured it's probably an easy color to 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 paint just silver. Right, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's easy to hide blemishes, and you know I'm not a fan of cars that have like a different color engine bay than the outside. Mm -hmm. Who would have that? Not me. I don't think. 
I don't. The ZK. <laughs> I, I was hoping no, to catch. No, I, I don't think know all my cards are actually the stock color. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the 240 is technically is like it's red in the engine bay instead of the maroon, but well, it's close. Jesse has been like five different colors, but yeah, but the engine bay is painted black. Like it's just flat black, so mm. it's it doesn't match, but it's <clears throat> as original as it would be. All right. Okay. Well, with that disappointment out of the way. ZK, how are you going to disappoint me today? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You don't like old Ford trucks, so. Uh... Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, an 86 Ford Ranger, which is pretty close to community member, community member Alex Nessie's truck mm -hmm. in the UK. He recently got one of these. I think his is like an 84. Yeah, I think his is a little the earlier. First-gen boxy Rangers. Yeah. And this was, they don't really show up that often because I don't know either if they didn't make that many of them or if they all got used up. Yeah, probably a little column A, column B. I feel like the Mazda, because in this era, I believe the Mazda and the Ford were very much so, like, similar. No, they no? were different. Hmm. Um, overseas, the Mazda was sold as the Courier. Right the Ford Courier, but in the US we had the Ranger and then the Mazda B series, which is fundamentally it's a, just a different truck. It's oh. actually a Mazda. Well then yeah, I just I never see these. Yeah. Um and we all know that I like mini trucks and this is a good one. For three grand? OBO. It's very plain. <laughs> <laughs> it it's all a little truck needs to be. It's true. It is like the mini truck minimalist style, but almost like too minimalist. Maybe I'd, maybe I'd think differently if it was slammed. <laughs> I'll be I also honest. like that it has a V6 badge on the fender. Wait, but does it? it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think they put... V, they might have put V6s in the first gen. And those would be the wheels I would put on it. Wait, it's a 2.9 liter in line four? Uh, maybe it is a V6. I think it I might be the, a V6. I, thought it was, I was thinking the 2.3 or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. That kind of looks like the intake manifold of a V6. 2.9 Ford. I really miss the era oh, yeah, of, it's a V6. of stamping, like doing this extravagant work in the intake manifold to tell everybody that it's electronic fuel injection. <laughs> when did engines get so ugly? Um, like, because nowadays they just put the covers on them and hide them. I would say, I would, I'm gonna blame Chevy for this with the injection molded intake manifold on the LS one. Uh, you say that, but like the whole injected manifold thing is actually an improvement. Like, it's. An, I'm not saying that that it's. I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm just saying that that was the that was the start of engines no longer looking like engines because plastic doesn't look as appealing like this piece of cast aluminum they did this to it because when you cast aluminum it looks nice it looks fancy but plastic yeah. just looks like plastic so if you're going to have plastic under there you might as well cover it with you know a big sheet of plastic so it just hides it and looks like nothing yeah I'm muffles the sound a bit but i don't know like yeah i don't know when that really started so probably early mid 2000s you think yeah so i was thinking somewhere between 95 and 2000 really yeah because i know the end of engines the, the 90 like late 90s lexuses started having engine covers well i don't think the early ones did like 93 so 97s did or whatever interesting so maybe yeah I always thought the Audi had an engine cover, but it turns out the entire intake manifold just covers the entire engine bay. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the whole thing is basically intake manifold when you, when you look at it from the top. Interesting. Yeah. Is this also yeah. a Texas truck? Cause it has a bit of, bit of the rust. Yes, but it's like a coast truck. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, that happens. In so Florida that's probably too. where that's from. Yeah. But I'm, there's no pictures of underneath it, but like, 
It doesn't look that bad. <laughs> they went through the effort to take a picture of the interior. Could we have maybe backed up a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I realize you wanted to get the odometer in there, but <sighs> taking pictures is cheap, people. <laughs> look at that tape deck. With um, the right modifications, this could be cool. Yeah, slam it or... Well, it's not a 4x4 four because four, some of those little mini trucks, when you like lift them up a bit and put on some big tires, they look kind of cool too. Yeah, you can go either way. It does say yeah. four-wheel drive. Is, were these never four-wheel drive? Does it say four-wheel drive? Yeah, oh, it does. Here. Drive four-wheel drive. Oh. It also says four cylinders, so I don't know how much True. to take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't I see a... Well... Of the one in the uh, interior picture. That might be a pumpkin under there, though. It just looks black. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Who knows? No, oh, no it's, uh, it's got lock in front. Maybe. Yeah. Could be <laughs> I mean, four by. CSI. Random parts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kurt is, this is front? obviously our investigate. Yeah. Investigator that's a, here. That's a, that's a four by four. So, yeah, you're going to have to go up. Yeah. <laughs> got it. You got to. I mean, if you want it to look like anything that's not a basic, you know, work truck, because that's what it looks like as of now. And and that's perfectly okay. You too can be just a plain basic work truck, and that's all right. I'm glad you said that. I've been waiting all my life for somebody to say that to me. <laughs> all right. With the mistakes out of the way, it is time to look for some of the best ads from the internet. Starting with last week's results, with uh, the classic Austin Martin, the mini ramp truck, or a fire truck. Any 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 personal uh, opinions on which one was the best? I feel like I probably y'all were probably pretty close, and I was trailing behind on this one. Yeah, I, don't know. I think it was a rough week to be a fire truck. <laughs> yeah, no one. I mean, everyone's inner child just died, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, the results are a very close race Ooh. between myself and Kurt. Two hundred votes on the board. Kurt takes it with eighty-seven and forty-four percent of the vote. I had seventy-one with thirty-six percent of the vote. And ZK actually did a lot better than I expected with uh, yeah, to 42 be honest. votes. <laughs> I yeah. didn't. I, I don't know. I, I guess the three of them basically couldn't be any different from each other. So <laughs> uh, certainly, certainly appealing to different different things. But people really liked the uh, Austin Martin, <laughs> which is the only time anybody will ever say that about that car. Mm-hmm. Very true. Boy, was it bad. <laughs> For this week, my challenger is this 2013 <laughs> Fiat 500 of Barth Tiny Turbo. <laughs> it is a heavily, extensively modified Fiat 500 of Barth with a lot of splitter. Kind of. It's missing the whole middle bit. I guess they're canards then when they're on the sides like that. Uh, yeah, a very... Canards. <laughs> a Go very on. modified <laughs> Fiat. <laughs> uh, with a very large intercooler in the front. And some good looking wheels. I like those wheels for this car. That's a. That's a I good wonder look. why. Hmm. Very strange, isn't it? <laughs> um... <laughs> And You're probably not exactly what came on the Viper for a period of time. You and your accusations are totally out of line. <laughs> um, I do like these when they're dropped. Like it looks so much better when it's that low. I'm sure it's I think harder I've to live with. It before, but the US Abarth is like an inch and a half taller than the Euro Abarth, like mm -hmm. factory. Because my and it actually. It actually makes it handle really weird. Like, it get, makes it squirrely under braking. Mm -mm. Which I think some people have anecdotally noticed. Um, but you slam them, and they turn into... They still drive, or, like, ride They turn the into tiny turbos. <laughs> is this... But, yeah. This back is different, isn't it? 
Like, there's only a single it, exit exhaust. And what are these taillights? I think it's the stock taillights with just the center with a sticker. Oh, I thought they were maybe, like, imported. Because then there's, be like, like, the five specials or there's something. There's, like, the 595 in Europe that's, like, different than oh, the 500. Yeah. I was wondering if it was, like, putting on stuff from that. No I idea. I wonder what it sounds like with the straight single pipe instead of the duals. Oh, so they removed the rear windshield wiper? Oh, so they did. You know why? Tiny turbo. Weight savings. <laughs> Weight savings, ZK. Look at this. Got to strip the interior and put the least comfortable oh, seats God. possible on it. Oh, if, a, if a Fiat 500 didn't ride bad enough to begin with, this just just sent your spine straight up into your into your brain. Those they are... don't ride that bad. Mm, okay. Tell, <laughs> tell that to my back. I drove one all the way to freaking Houston. Yeah, but it was a little loaded. You got... <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! Um, <laughs> you gotta have the list of parts too. Mm -hmm. Thirteen thousand dollars worth. I don't even remember what they were asking for the thing, but it's got like and, you know legit brakes on it and stuff. Like someone yeah, went, went all out on this some, thing. Weirdly, parts for the tiny turbo are like big car prices. Mm. Tiny turbo, big prices. It's a. Uh, it's a choice. I don't like it. You don't like it? No. I think and I really wasn't... like a Barth, which is why we own one. If it didn't have the splitter stuff, I would like it. The splitter stuff is the stuff that's a little too much for me. Uh, there's a lot those of racer. Hood vents that the, maybe aren't functional. The hood vents don't bother me that bad. Actually, they probably help a lot on these cars. Right, especially since they went to a front mount, so it's got to push a lot of air through a very tiny engine bay. Yeah. I but they do look a little dumb. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was neat, but maybe not to my tastes. Yeah. And they have a tiny turbo plate and even a tiny turbo vanity plate. That is going all out. I don't think the Italian have umlauts, though. A what? I don't think the Italians have umlauts. What's a... Well, that's a rude thing to say. <laughs> what? I, I don't know what it means. What does it mean? On the front plates. Uh, huh? The, the dots over the U are called umlauts. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you lost me on that one. All right. From the tiny turbo to... To Tiny whatever hills. this is, it what is says, it? what's that? It, it, well, the title is confusing. That's not the only thing. The title says it's a 1977 Scout Motorhome GM. Okay. <laughs> um, For $500. Ran when I parked it, so no, no, it no. didn't qualify for a ran when parked, but I chose to use it here. <laughs> uh, not ran when parked. Ran when, yeah. when I parked it. Ran when I parked it. Uh. 400 cubic inch V8, gas engine, ran well, traveled the USA coast to coast, maintenance was good, six wheels, set up for a small wood stove not included, Aww. sturdy rebuilt roof, new design sheds water well. Oh. Um, also, yes, that is a doghouse on the roof. Roof ventilation, right? Ventilation hatch can be open in rain and snow. Messy interior sitting. Okay. Yes, that those words make more sense than the pictures if we just oh, no. take a look through them. Oh, yeah, motorhome <laughs> on the right, on the right, or bot. Yes, bot right. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, there it there is. There we go. Okay, there it is. All right, it's over there. It's over there. Thanks for that. Oh, but. <sighs> But is this the roof that was redone? <laughs> <laughs> you can see the uh, uh okay. There's the doghouse. <laughs> is your dog yes, that is a doghouse on the roof. Also, the roof is just like sheet metal rolled over yeah. and screwed to the side. Sheds water, but well. it sheds water. 
ZK, it's a Jeep thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> uh, another picture of almost it. Almost it. Almost. And a cabin and a pickup truck and a, a, a van. Hey, do, you think, do you think that thing has a 416 to five speed? <laughs> it's the right year. Uh, <laughs> this is even less it. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to find out with the resulting pictures. Oh, boy. This is literally just the cabin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is literally just the cabin. Does it come <laughs> have with a van again. the cabin? This is still just the cabin. <laughs> Very proud of their uh, their structural work. Mm. What are all the warning signs? Or no, no trespassing. trespassing. Posted. You'll be shot. <laughs> nice dirt road. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wood. So... <laughs> Wood. It's all, it's all the same ad still. Just let me remind everybody. Posted. They're very. Oh, wait, wait. Is the cabin for sale too? This is going to be very hard to do if nobody's allowed on the property, but you put your for sale sign on your property. <laughs> mm -hmm. Still a cabin. <laughs> oh, I think if you look real close. That's the camper back there. Allegedly. Oh, uh, no. Wrong year. Wrong year for the Ford. That's too bad. Mm, that's a shame. Big shame. Firewood for you if you need it. There's another cabin or an outhouse out there in this blurry uh, <laughs> Sasquatch image. Uh, still the same ad. It's still, still... all the same ad. <laughs> Oh, we finally reached the end, and we've Aww, never seen journey. inside of the camper. <laughs> that we know of. There was that nondescript wood True. panel we saw. <laughs> True. So, <laughs> what this reminds me of is, like, one of those found footage films <laughs> where it's like, oh, the teenagers were murdered. Let's find what was on their phone. Yeah. Yeah, this is like you ran across the scene of this cabin and the thing in the woods. Or you just then... found a memory card on the ground. <laughs> yeah. With these images and you have to piece together the, the, the crime. What I've just noticed is there is a very deep hole under the back of this Ford. It, it's the third cabin. Cabin. <laughs> okay. Not burial site. Cabin. Got it. Yeah, that's... uh. That was a wild ride, Kurt. Thank you for, for joining me with it. On it. I feel endangered. In yeah. <laughs> yeah, now now we now that we've seen the van again, we all have forty eight hours to live. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that was a Ford and not a GM or a scout. Oh, the uh the actual <laughs> camper? Yeah. Uh, investigate. Enhance. Enhance. Oh, uh, no, that's a GM. It's a GM. Yeah. <laughs> so they this might be insane, solved. and they might be murderers, but they're not liars. <laughs> <laughs> that's important, you know? All right, ZK, take us on a journey. What we have here is a 1993 Toyota Corolla. It's ugly, but it runs damn good. <laughs> Another thing I've been waiting for somebody to say to me. <laughs> <laughs> Six hundred dollars, all yours. What more do you need to know? Mm -hmm. Other than, did it drive through an active forest fire? Yeah, that's and that's fine. what like the front scorching is. is yeah, but it's got updated tags. At it least, does. well, I, when I got this ad, it was a few more months in the future or whatever. But up to date tags, that's a real good sign. Real good sign. Around here, if you ah, got there's a Corolla ism. You ever have friends oh. in high school that had a Corolla, and then the door handles yeah, are broken? Yeah, no, that happened. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't think, know why. I think I had multiple it, friends it, that the had the handles like, missing off the back door too. That the, you would just have like a piece of string or something, or you'd have to like reach outside and just grab the the door latch rod from the outside. <laughs> uh, so stylistic choice here, or. What what are we thinking? Well, you know how we had the murder shack slash motor home. So this is the impression of blood on a foggy window. 
Art. <laughs> mm -hmm. Art, everybody. Or they they it, it, they hit some thing, <laughs> and they used a lot of bleach <laughs> and hydrogen peroxide to wash off the evidence. <laughs> the fender is very weird. Yeah, it almost looks like paint. It almost looks like MS paint. Like, it looks digitally altered to be this way, but it's not. Yeah, like, it's one of those weird, like, have you seen, like, the fake patina that's, like, mm -hmm. airbrushed on? Yeah. That's what it looks like, but there's no way that's fake on this car. <laughs> no. Very strange. I mean, at least they upgraded to a new Corolla. It's true. <laughs> Maybe it has door handles. Oh, you know, you know what? Maybe... Maybe it was a front-end wreck, and they pulled the panels off a burnt car. That's possible. That's a that's a possible possibility. We got the driver's side uh, door latch, at least. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> it's Running ugly, good. but it runs damn good. That's damn good. Damn good to you. At least also, one cap. Also, I don't know about around you, but a $600 licensed running car around here has got to be one of them it's gotten to be very rare oh yeah that that doesn't exist very much anymore here it does because there's no laws but uh <laughs> in, in a place with laws yeah there's a, it's it's hard to find something for under a thousand bucks yeah all right well once again three very different choices <laughs> uh you could go for the uh the tiny turbo the haunted camper in the woods <laughs> <laughs> the found footage yeah or uh or the runs damn good runs damn good corolla the damn good corolla damn good corolla all right, make sure you look at the straw poll below, and then make sure you shout in the comments if I haven't posted the straw poll below, because I'm really good at that. This is not, however, the end of the show. We are now going to move over to the guest segment, but we'll be back to uh, close out the show and give some thoughts on, on what Keswell had for us on the show after that. Everybody, it's time for a brand new segment on Randwin Parked, the guest spotter. We have this week Ooh. Caswall with your very, very first honor of being our guest spotter. Thank you for joining. Yeah. No, no worries. So Kaz comes to us from New Zealand, which is mm -hmm. a little bit different in a market from, from ours. Um, oh, yeah. I, I think my main question to get us started here is, are the ads there still bad like do people still take as little time as possible to make ads there uh i think my favorite one for that i saw a couple of months ago was someone selling some rare aston man and db4 for a million and a half dollars and it literally looked like he just pulled it out of his garage and parked it by a brick wall and took some photos of it on his phone very nice <laughs> do you at least stretch for a photographer like <laughs> Do you uh, do you still get the uh, the screenshots of the phone? Like that's my favorite is when people like uh, have pictures of their car and then they screenshot the picture on their phone and post that. I haven't haven't seen that yet, but then we don't really have Craigslist here, so. I do feel like yeah, maybe maybe a little bit more advanced <laughs> in society. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we start getting into the ad spotting, people are going to want to know what you drive so i asked for mm -hmm. some pictures of your fleet since the three of mm -hmm. us obviously have a fleet what you yeah, got everyone's got fleets all right uh well i guess Ooh, you want to open one and then we'll talk okay <laughs> let's, start. Yeah. let's start from the beginning all right so this is my race car it's a Suzuki cappuccino for some reason i found out i have no pictures of my race car apart from this one so it lives in a toyota diner box truck um, which is now like an affordable garage service truck for it. I think it uh, scares Cone the idea of trying to get it in and out of this truck on the ramps. That's, I mean, that is at least a cappuccino high. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cappuccino. It's about two and a half feet, I think. It's not that bad. If you say so. But yeah, no. It's pretty good. It's, um, runs more turbo boost than I do pressure in the tires, which is you know, the way it should be. 
<laughs> I would have my tires to be very flat to do that. <laughs> yes, uh, it runs 24 pounds of boost and run 18 pounds in the tires, so... That's very low in the tires. Is your pounds different? Yeah. <laughs> are, your, are, are your tires upside down there? Do they run different just pressure? doesn't doesn't weigh anything. Yeah, I suppose. If I was, if I was doing... Well, this is mainly for like, what I call some short sprint events. That you don't have any time to heat them up. Yeah. Yeah, if I was on the track, it would be more like 21, 22, but it's still... It's the, so what's the, and the story booster. on the cappuccino? Like, how did it become a race car? Oh, well, okay. I, you said you wanted to keep this segment short, but... All right, you have two minutes. Figure um, it out. <laughs> two minutes, okay. Um, my first cappuccino was my very first car. It's the one I learned to drive in, um, which is freaking hilarious when I did the test that the guy was a rather large gentleman. And when I needed to do a hill start, I had to get I had to ask him to pull his gut in so I could get onto the hand. Oh no! <laughs> Lo and behold, I didn't pass first time. Um, um, then Andrew binned that into an urban bank in Victoria, in Australia. Um, to be fair, he was following the pace car, and the pace car also went into the <laughs> bank. I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, Andrew, by the so, way. Is, is is Daffy as we know, and mm. they are developers of the game automation, which I should have plugged at the very beginning of this segment. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, obviously, you should have also. So I'm going to report you to yeah. uh, the CEO oh, of yeah. the company. So. Yeah, Re report me to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so when we moved to New Zealand, put the that cappuccino in a container, brought it over here, straightened it, stripped it out, and start to make a race car. Then Isaac brought this green one to put back on the road, but it was illegally registered here as farm when it was imported. Oh, right. And so we had to go through the re registration process, but the paper trail was dead. And when a car is over a certain age in Japan, getting the paper trail is basically impossible. So now it's in effectively registration limbo from that point of view. Oh, I know but that this feeling. Already... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but this had a, a Motec M400 ECU in it and stuff like that. So, so yeah, so I uh, put a bigger turbo in it, bigger injectors. It's now tuned to make double factory power. So this makes 86 kilowatts of the wheels, which is 113 horsepower. So um, you've, yeah, you've worked your way up to like NA Miata territory, but with oh, yeah, a yeah. three quarter scale one. Yeah. With three cylinders and 660 cc. I mean, it's slightly larger than a pint of milk. <laughs> all right and then uh this yeah. monstrosity yeah that's the mazda lantis or as we like to call it the lamtis andrew's surname is lamb um uh, yeah that has a two liter v6 it was on the smoking tire of matt farrer he built that a while ago but since then it's been stripped has a cage uh, it's still far too porky, as you can see, it almost rolling the uh, front tire off. Yeah, the, uh, when your when your rim's about to touch ground in the turn, you you got some issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sounds absolutely fantastic. Whenever it's at events, you always hear at least one person comment of like, "Geez, that sounds good." Um, and uh, one of our friends marshalling at a hill hill climb would be like, "Oh man, you'd hear this like absolutely fantastic car coming," and then you look at it, it's a stupid dumb Lantis. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's one of those cars like you kind of want to cover your eyes a little bit, but you just want your ears open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's glorious. All right, all right. This is... Um, so that so that's just uh, a picture of the rough fleet, so you can see how big the box truck is. Then that's our other daily driver, the uh, Honda S660. We got that uh, end of April, I think. So it's a fairly recent purchase. Um, only done now five thousand so 3,000 miles it's 2016 uh the importer dealer here had it for three years didn't manage to sell it in that time um they lost at least probably 15 grand on bringing it in and wow. us buying it so it's really good um yeah it's a lot of fun a lot of fun yeah these are these are a kind of guard like to the cappuccino and this are they don't exist over here so when we see them mm -mm -mm. they're usually just insanely overvalued so for you to say like idea yeah, a dealer brought this in nobody wanted it is is a little bit bizarre <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah i've certainly seen that happen over here where importers will like they'll they'll see something over in japan they'll bring it over 
nobody wanted that. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a risk you take. Yeah, but according to you um, got choice there. According to like Car Jam, where you can see all the vehicle, like all the registered vehicles in New Zealand, there only appears to be five of these in New Zealand at the moment. Rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the looks you get when you drive it around are amazing. It's P U P U. Oh look, it's like it's a supercar, and then it gets closer, and they're like, what? Wait, <laughs> why is it so small? <laughs> Yeah, it has a very uh, NSX kind of look to it, and then you yeah, get up yeah. close to it, and it's like power wheels. Yeah, and um, and like when you're out for a spirited drive, places I have never had people pull over and get out of the way as fast hmm. as as driving this. They just go, I don't know what this is, and it's <laughs> right behind me. I need to get out of its way, and it's bright yellow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So another picture of it in good old sunny Wellington. It's so pretty, not in the car, but mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> Oh, thanks. <laughs> I kid. I mean, it's it's not as gaudy as like most modern Hondas, but it's mm. certainly not as refined as some of the older K car designs. It's got a little bit of that uh, desperate to be youth look to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see that. <laughs> Lots more pictures of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful mountains. Mm-hmm. And this and then, abomination. Oh, 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 come on. I was trying to, to, to push that we have, like, the ultimate fleet. So this is the other daily driver of Tesla Model 3 performance. Um, so, yeah, it's it's great. A lot of fun. You can be a bit of a hooligan and no one cares because it doesn't make any noise. That so, I'm jealous of. Yeah. Um, broken and converted quite a few of our motorsport friends taking them for rides as they just can't believe how blindingly quick it is at accelerating and makes no noise doing it but yeah so yeah the automatic plate but this is you know your fun daily driver going to and from work the honda for the weekends and you know a real crisp nice six-speed manual transmission and all the noise and drama coming from behind you and then the box truck moving anything big i mean it's the ultimate fleet ultimate fleet and you've got the advantage of like you don't have to travel somewhere to go to driving roads. You just travel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a fantastic road, like five minutes away from the house. Very nice. Very nice. Not jealous at all. <laughs> all right. So how many cars do you just give me a rough number off the top of your head? How many cars have you owned in, in your car buying life? Oh, geez. Uh, let's say eight or 10. Okay. That's pretty much on par with, Somewhere in 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 the ZK to Cone range. Mm-mm. Do you do a lot of window shopping, or do you pretty much just look for cars when you would go to buy them? Um, a little bit for column A, a little bit for column B. Depends on what we're buying. Gotcha. If we're not in a rush, then a lot of window shopping. Um, but then that Honda was literally spur in a moment. Those are awesome. Um, yeah. All right. Well. I asked you to uh, to do some of our our ad spotting style, looking for a Randwin parked find, which I'm curious, you know, what the difference between the yeah. like, mantra I mean, of that is. Really a, it's not really a term used here, Randwin yeah. Park. So for Doubt this, I just did a I just did a search for like project, and then just went through the photos trying to find something that looked like it was growing in a field. Because that's also <laughs> another thing that we don't get very much here and I sort of, or at least I've never really seen and I don't know if it's because I don't look or if because it rains so much or it's so wet that anything left in the field would just rust to right. nothing in Could be. short order, a bit like this thing <laughs> and this thing is a 1971 Citroen DS21, I think it's a Volsade or something in the description some like rarer edition is what the seller claims I think it's in the next photo the only thing I know um, about these is from they put one in, in the new Dirt Rally game. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I quite like about this was well, just about the way the, um, you know, you know, spiel when you had this car's taken off the road 20 years ago. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, following a minor frontal impact, hence the panels are missing. Impact damage appears to be limited to the front left suspension arms. Bent backwards approximately 70 mils. So that's three inches. Right. So a minor front impact that has somehow bent the suspension arms three inches. They're very weak. Right. <laughs> yeah. The front chassis rails appear to be straight. Mm. Sure. Okay. Sure. Sure, <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Body shell appears to be square and true. There is no rust through that I have found, although there is surface rust all over the hull. Like, oh, is it a boat? <laughs> no? 
like, okay, um, edge of condition unknown, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right, you know. And, stuff. and then there's a massive rust hole. In like, the... couldn't find a rust hole anywhere in it. Just, I looked everywhere. This thing is, is solid. Mm hmm. Huge gash yeah. in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird spot to even have rusted through. Is, is that where it had its palace badge or some other badge? Oh, perhaps, like... yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. The doors are patched mm. in. The engine's still there. Oh, there's so much more in front of the engine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a confusing mess this is. Mm. I don't know much about these, like if, if restoration parts are easy to come by or not, but yeah, all of I've this got, stuff no, I, looks unique. I mean, I've always wanted a Citroen DS, and I always thought it would actually be quite a good conversion to an electric car, because everyone always talks about the engine in the DS and how fantastic it is. Um, you know, it's the real point of owning the car. Like, I, sarcasm I, aside. I, I'm, I'm sensing a little sarcasm. <laughs> So yeah, I've always thought it'd be quite fun to make into an EV. It's well, not the, like they don't have plenty of room. Right. The crazy part of these bonnet. was the suspension. If I mm, remember correctly. The hydro pneumatic Edens. Yeah. Which I believe is what this giant tank is related to on the front of it. Mm -hmm. And just there's a big a, like ball on top of the yeah, shock. And, it's oh got boy. like a diaphragm that pressurizes oil behind and all this weird stuff. And they have a they have a ride height lever by the driver's seat. So you could like change the ride height as you're driving along. Um, I can't help but notice this wheel is uh, very much so in the firewall <laughs> from this minor collision. Yeah. And very far behind the other side. Yeah. Oh, what are we? And then, you know. This is art here. <laughs> I'm just going to keep tilting my head until something about this makes sense. Yeah, I mean it's it's the windscreen a pillar. I guess showing us bent up. Yeah, how how bent it is. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's not even that good for even if you wanted a DS for parts. Oh, I love the fact that you know to save the fuel tank, there's a rag shoved in there. Hey, there. You know, they made an effort. Mm, more rust. Plenty of detail. I mean. If only they had yeah. taken this much like care and attention to preserving it. Preserving <laughs> it. Mm. Interior is surprisingly maybe. The back seat is surprisingly big. Like I didn't, I didn't expect them to be that big inside. Yeah, they're totally flat floor as well. Look, there's no transmission. Oh floor. yeah. It's really weird. But they have quite chunky boy seals. Mm. Oh. I don't know. If we, I don't think any of these made it stateside. I think they're all right-hand drives. So there's probably like one over here that some quirky car collector decided he needed. But oh, interesting. I thought you'd have a few DSs over there. I mean, you know, all the French ones will be left-hand drives. So true. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I've, I've personally never seen one. I know nothing about mm. them other than hearing stories of people saying that suspension <laughs> and like. Yeah. What is that? And um. The brake is a button, not a pedal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if there's any... No, I don't think they have any pictures of that. Uh, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Maybe they are over here. I don't know. I'm sure someone I'm trying to remember us. if me or Andrew drove one briefly when we did some work for a guy who was um, taking one on peaking to Paris. Mm. But yeah. These I swear... Ones. I swear I did use the brake on one and it like you just headbutt the steering wheel was it's just it's like yeah. all server assistance just immediately like there's like yeah they're very weird what a strange decision for a strange mm. car all right I, I'm it's not it's not exactly the mantra of ran when parked however no. I just don't think... I think that's an American obsession. <laughs> I, there's an obsession over here with the idea of, like, the barn find and the, like, the allure of this mm. hidden gem that makes that claim very popular here. The obsession here you see in sales um, is that it's timing chain, not timing belt. Oh. <laughs> like, um, 
like that's their paranoia because there was a heap of like like 90s early 2000s japanese cars imported where none of them had the timing belts mm -hmm. done and they all variously exploded that was a after. i remember that being a big thing like when i was first getting into cars in like the early 2000s that people were like oh you gotta stay away from that japanese stuff those timing belts are they're time bombs mm. but yeah as but i've then... as i've gotten older i've realized the timing belts are golden because changing a timing belt is usually like a 20 minute job yeah. and it's well, the thing is, is it's generally not the belt that snaps it's the tension is right go. and then they and it's not like the timing chain doesn't have a tension tensioner or multiple guides that break off yeah and, well yeah. where or you know like it's not that cool. so this one i think just, i tried to aim for zk <laughs> that maybe he might want it <laughs> Pandering to ZK. So, yeah, so this is a 1996 Suzuki Carry 4x4 Hipper truck. Um, I appreciate so yeah, so the uh, the Americana wheels on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's a key car, so it's 660cc free cylinder, so it's tiny. <laughs> um, and it's, yeah, four-wheel drive, has low range. I mean, what more could he want? It's great. It's passed all of and its a diff lock. checks. A diff lock, axle locks. Yep. Four yeah. custom, probably golf cart wheels. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's got the original wheel, wheels in the tray, so you can see um that just really how tiny uh, the tray is. That really gives you a perspective on how big the tray is, not, <laughs> 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 and how much like how much frame is visible too is fantastic. Mm. Also, also the way it's like a tipper of like it says it has a three hundred and fifty kilo payload, so that's like seven hundred. Mm -hmm. 50 pounds of like do you really need a tipper for that much soil right i mean i'm trying to really imagine like you... tipping that thing with that much weight in it <laughs> and the, <laughs> the feelings <laughs> that you would have inside of this vehicle so yeah the weird i think that's the low high range right yeah i was looking at all the different Libra. four high four no four medium <laughs> there's an m there or something <laughs> who knows this might be no. I was gonna say. Oh, and that's... a neutral it has it has neutral on the transfer case. Yeah, too high. That's four weird. high. I've never seen that before. Neutral four low. Yeah, you could be in double neutral. <laughs> 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 what speed do we want to go? Double neutral. <laughs> Super easy to push it around. So are these factory made or do they? Is this yeah, like a yeah, company no, these, that buys these, them? These are factory. Um, you see, a, you see a reasonable amount of them around here. Surprisingly, um, you see a reasonable amount of them over here. All of a sudden, I guess uh, it's become a I it's guess become an it, importing obsession. Yeah, I guess they've got the twenty five years, and they're probably dirt cheap in Japan. Yeah, I see them a lot where like little little companies that you know just move stuff around their local businesses. They they get them, and then they like they try to use them for advertising. Like, look at our cute mm -hmm. little truck. <laughs> Please come buy our stuff. Yeah, I was trying to debate between this and there was a, a massively lifted one for sale. It's pretty good. Nice. <laughs> but of course um, there is. Air there's conditioning. an engine in there somewhere behind the alternator and air compressor. Nice of them to put What's those it? front and center or for air us. Compressor. <laughs> and yeah, four tires in the tray. And the bed, the hydraulic bed makes it for me. Like, <laughs> that's that's the image that I need. And then you, you hang your banner right there across it, telling everybody ah. about your pulled pork barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was, that was mildly interesting. Now for my favorite category of Raymond Parked, because I'm a person that likes to make mistakes. Mm. I like to make your mistake. Or would I? So, the only thing we don't have in a fleet is a camper van. <laughs> so I was thinking a camper. So, um, one of the sort of stereotypical sort of camper vans you see here in uh, New Zealand are like a steamers and things like that converted into campers um, for backpackers and stuff like that. But this is the luxury version of this done with a uh, relatively new L Grand. You know what a missing L Grand is? No. Oh yeah, and for some reason it's a Montana camper. But... I like that. I like that they're like, 
What would be large that people would understand? Montana. <laughs> so yeah, so 2005, this is an L Grand. So that's a weird Japanese only luxury MPV of sorts. It generally has like six big chain electric like three point five yeah, 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 chain, chain driven. Driven. It's not it's, it's not belt. It's not belt. It's not uh, a VQ that's, the... that's been known for timing chain problems. Absolutely not. <laughs> well, it, it is a VQ, and if you've I'm ever sure seen it's... on the bonnet one of these things, you really wouldn't like it. Um, but yeah, the rear wheel drive, collectible or all wheel drive, it's pretty cool. Has a tow bar on this one, so I know you're not a big fan of trailers, but I could tow the cappuccino with this <laughs> if I wanted. Um, but yeah, they're pretty cool, these spaceship L Grand wagon things. I'm trying to get a sense of how big it is. Like, I, I can't quite place if Slightly it's like... Slightly bigger than an Estima? That doesn't help me. <laughs> you have Estimas? No. Uh, what the hell did you call them? Because uh... oh, Hoovies from Hoovies Garage had one. The weird mid-engine Toyota Previa. Sorry, Previa. that's what Previa. they're called. Okay. Yeah, they're called Estimas in Japan. Okay. Is yeah, this Previa. factory it's in like, here? It's slightly bigger than a Previa. This so what? this this doesn't look factory. <laughs> this looks no. Yeah, as I said, they they've converted it. They've oh, made it okay. a Montana, whatever that means. With very interesting upholstery. Mm. Some, yeah, some um, lovely... you, I figured the spiel. They said it's French script, which I don't quite <laughs> understand the difference. Oh, that looks lovely. Yeah. Mm. I suppose yeah, it the, it's, nice. that's the bed as well. Yeah, yeah. There's some pictures of it folded down. Now, the thing I don't understand is this is a certified self-contained camper van. So basically what that means is it has a toilet that you can access when the bed is made. Excuse me? I don't know where the hell they've hidden it in this thing. Are they considering the sink to be the toilet? <laughs> I don't know. I've not seen anything that leads me to believe that's true. Yeah, I know, but they say it's certified self-contained. I'm pretty sure in the description they say that there's a Yeah, I, where, I did read where that. Where is it? I mean, the only thing we haven't seen inside of is this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, good luck to you. <laughs> huh. Yeah, but I think this would be quite nice. I mean, it's basically, it's a van. It's not like you, when you're like driving a real camper around and having to, um, you know, deal with parking and all that fun stuff. Like, you know be easy to get to places quite interesting very a little bit on the short side it would definitely be a a lean over kind of deal mm. oh yeah like when what when inside it yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. yeah you're going to be sitting or you're going to be laying <laughs> those are those are your two <laughs> positions yep well that's certainly we we don't have anything now there is there's like campers here like there's campers yeah, and then there's yeah, van yeah, 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 campers yeah, yeah. and van campers are a thing but this is so very much so like a like a regular pedestrian van with a camper inside mm -hmm. of it <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's yeah no, and it, usually yeah, they're modified on common. the outside it's too super common here there's rental com companies that like import forever years mm -hmm. uh like in and convert heaps of them I like um, that there's still a door on the other side too. Like there's a door, uh, yeah. and then there's cabinetry. Yeah, oh uh, yeah. I like the way that I probably haven't taken a picture, a picture for that side because if you probably look through the window, you can see all the plumbing, and oh, yeah. all the wires, <laughs> and everything you like. Um, there's lovely curtain. It'll be fine. Well, the thing is, is I'm pretty sure those are factory curtains. Oh. <laughs> so it's a so it's a swanky van to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Like the. These have like effectively like six lazy, lazy boy seats mm. in them from factory, like all electric and move around. And the middle ones will fold flat into being picnic tables for you, all that sort of fun stuff. This is what um, we should have gotten here instead of the SUV craze. Like instead of mm. this, we got Ford Explorers, and that yeah is a is a shame <laughs> because yeah. I'm sure these drive better, are more efficient, and probably yeah. way more comfortable. And has selectable four wheel drive, so it can still work in the snow. Well, there you go. You're gonna you're gonna make that mistake. How much money was it? How many dollars? Oh, dollar you do? Too many, really. Twenty four nine ninety nine. Twenty four nine yeah. ninety nine. That's. So I think that'd be about seventeen thousand US. That's not as much as I expected, to be honest. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's well priced. Seeing seeing that a good L Grand one of these of that era here is already like fifteen thousand or so. Um, yeah. And the uh, the right amount of people are looking for it. <laughs> Forty two. Yep. All right, that is our first guest ad spotter for Ranwin Parked. We did it. Mm -hmm. We've we've seen life on the other side. <laughs> well, a slice of life. A little slice of life. There's yeah. there's plenty of other Kiwis that we uh, we might need to get a different perspective on because mm. from what I've been able to tell about New Zealand is the automotive scene there is kind of just everything. <laughs> everything yeah. and anything. I was thinking of like, actually, do I just make it all full of Americana stuff just to be sort of? <laughs> <laughs> Would be a little cheeky, but uh, hey, I appreciate you taking the time to give us a, mm -hmm. a slice of of Randwin Park from your area. Yeah, huh? and do make sure you check out Automation uh, at AutomationGame.com. If you haven't heard of it, you probably yeah, never watched right. anything on my channel before. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Is that, or just somehow have not heard of us? Mm. We're getting really well known. Wow, that's the. I mean, the humble. I, I once had someone recognize me when I went into like the equivalent of like AutoZone here. That's impressive. That's that. I wasn't wearing like like a t-shirt or anything. That's probably the point at which I quit. Like, if I go into an AutoZone <laughs> and somebody recognizes me, you're just gonna see me disappear. Like, that's it for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we go. Our first guest spotter, Caswell, from New Zealand. Anything in there that uh, suited your fancy or or you would want to ship as far as physically possible to bring it here? Yeah, there's a few things in there that just make me angry. <laughs> like the, the S660 that we don't get here. I mean, um, pretty much everything about New Zealand makes me angry because, A, we don't get it here, and... and B, they have everything. Like, everything that I've found out about their automotive culture is just like, oh, you want that? Okay, you can get that. That's just rude. Yeah. Dang, guys. Dang, rude dudes. I don't think there was anything for Kurt in there. A little bit too no. too modern for Kurt. Too modern. Like, like I, don't, I don't think Kurt's a big Citroen guy. No, that just was a complicated mess so i didn't know what <laughs> was going on there being a literal wreck but right and i haven't looked it up but i do think we got ds21s here but maybe not like exactly like that but i do think yeah. we had something that was similar to that i know that my dad's told me about the fact that his dad worked on those suspensions like on the hydraulic pneumatic suspensions uh, so I know we got something like that over here. I just don't know if it was exactly that. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was the DS that we got here. But yeah, we did get Citroens here in the 70s. And they're as strange as they look. <laughs> just like me. Oh, oh, and the, <laughs> the Mazda or Suzuki truck thing. Mm -hmm. I like them. We can get those here actually new through some weird laws. But that specific one had the worst wheels in the world on it so sorry i don't like it it's weird that that happens over there too because that seems to happen here anytime i see those for sale over here they put those awful wheels on them and i don't because they're the cheapest ones at discount tire probably and... yuck. yuck just <laughs> yuck all right well let us know if you liked having a guest on we have other people in mind from around the globe that can have a, a different perspective on uh, car ads from the internets. Thank you as always for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye And don't forget bye. to vote below or yell at Cone for not adding the poll. Especially that part. Thank you for watching episode 32, Kurt. Episode 32. Zero 32. <laughs>